Well, we're beginning the bulletin with our continuing focus on the flood, flood ravaged Jammu and Kashmir as waters recede. Army Chief General Dalbir Singh Sohag has said that communication and connectivity is now the biggest challenge in the rescue operations. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Omar Abdullah is facing attack. He's facing criticism for the state's lack of preparedness. TVTN's managing editor Rahul Kawal with this ground report. Flood waters are receding, but anger and resentment are mounting over what is being seen as a slow rescue and relief effort, with hundreds of thousands of people still stranded. In Srinagar, an angry mob stormed the chief minister's residence. Former MP Sefudin Sos was heckled, while several have been attacked by locals still waiting to be rescued. The wrath of the people mostly falling on the local administration and the Umar government. The chief minister himself on the defensive. After days of photo ops and cursory appearances, Omar once again visible on the front lines last evening, clarifying his government's actions to headlines today. Who can blame them? I mean, they don't see what we're doing. Uh, they don't, I mean, how, who all do I explain to how long it takes to respond to a crisis of this nature? How long it takes to start accumulating material and flying it in? But even as Omar harps on his government's proactiveness, his own officers cannot help but vent their anger. The administration was working on the work of temporary rehabilitation. So, in that way, the civil rights issue was failed. Elections are due in Jammu and Kashmir in just a couple of months from now, probably in November. And the level of anger against the Omar Abdullah government can be sensed in the air. People itching, waiting for an opportunity to express their anger and cast their mandate when that opportunity comes along and that's going to be a big big problem for uh, the NC Congress government which people believe has completely failed them and let this down at this hour of need. With camera person Prem Chand Mishra, this is Rahul Kamul on board an NDRF rescue vessel reporting from Srinagar for headlines today. Well, the big story we're tracking rescue and relief operations in flood ravaged Kashmir. As the Omar Abdullah government comes under fire for its lack of preparedness, the question on everybody's mind is was it possible for the administration to contain the extent of the disaster? Our sister concern, Mail Today exclusive, has now revealed that flood hit Srinagar is perhaps paying the price of ignorance that local authorities have shown towards preserving its lakes and wetlands. According to Mail Today, despite several studies and reports by scientists in the state itself, the state government kept sitting on alerts instead of strengthening its preparedness for handling impending disasters. Four years ago, the Flood Control Department of Jammu had formulated a dire but accurate warning on the state's summer capital being flooded by an intense spell of rain. The report and its copied weighed roughly a tonne and the heavy duty consignment was sent to the Union Ministry for Water Resources in a truck. Nothing of note happened after delivery, certainly not enough to make any difference to what was inevitably round the corner. A study available with the Union Ministry of Environment and Forest carried out by the GIS Laboratory, JNK State Remote Sensing Centre says that more than 50% of the water bodies in Srinagar have been lost in the last century. Scientists used satellite imagery to study the shrinking of lakes between 1911 and 2004. According to the Centre for Science and Environment, the CSC, the government is absolving itself of its responsibility by simply stating that the Indian Meteorological Department had predicted that such events were caused due to interaction of monsoon current with the western disturbances and not going further and deeper into the occurrences. Headlines today spoke with uh, the CSE head Sunita Narayanan a short while ago and this is what she had to say. The nature of calamity today is, um, is horrendous and therefore the state government is struggling. But I think the minister, as he is the flood and irrigation minister of the state, he must recognize also that it is his department that plays a very critical role in making sure that such floods do not happen in the future. 
because we know today that there will be extreme rainfall events and we know that flood control becomes critical and in jammu and kashmir two major problems have happened one they do not even have a flood monitoring center in jammu kashmir when we asked the central water commission why the center was not set up they have in writing said that the state government did not ask them to set up such a monitoring set center so clearly the state government did not take flood seriously till now two as the minister for irrigation he has to understand that his role of making sure that flood channels are protected that you do not encroach upon them that the lakes and the ponds of jammu kashmir are not destroyed as all satellite imagery is showing today it is showing very clearly that habitations have come in low lying area where they should not have come it is showing very clearly that flood control systems of the past have been destroyed while speaking to headlines today jammu and kashmir irrigation and flood minister sham lal sharma deflected the blame he said that such a disaster does not come with a prior warning dekhiye jahan mujhe lagta hai ki ye time blame game ka nahi hai ये एक मुझे लगता है कि बहुत बड़ी त्रासदी है जो आ, हम मैंने अपनी ज़िंदगी में अब मेरी उम्र भी जो है 50 साल से ऊपर है और जो लोग 100 सौ साल के भी हैं क्योंकि मैं पिछले पाँच दिन से कश्मीर में ही था और इसको बहुत क्लोजली हम इन चीज़ों को देख रहे थे साउथ कश्मीर से लेके नॉर्थ कश्मीर तक और खसूस तौर पर जो हमारी सेंट्रल कश्मीर है जिसको श्रीनगर शहर कहा जाता है तो मुझे लगता है कि ये डिज़ास्टर जो है ये बहुत बड़ा है और कहीं ना कहीं आ, कोई कोताही हो सकती है इंक्रोचमेंट की जहाँ वाटर बॉडी की लेकिन ये बहुत बड़ा एक कुदरत की तरफ से एक कहर है चार तारीख को जब जहाँ पे बारिश शुरू हुई थी फोर्थ ऑफ सितंबर और मुझे याद है कि मैंने रात के चार एक बजे कश्मीर की कश, के डीसी डिप्टी कमिश्नर श्रीनगर डिप काम श्रीनगर एस एस पी श्रीनगर और इन, मेरा चीफ इंजीनियर इरीगेशन फ्लड कंट्रोल जो हमारा इरीगेशन फ्लड कंट्रोल का हमारा कंट्रोल रूम जीरो ब्रिज पे था और वहाँ मैंने सुबह चार बजे तक ये जो है ये मीटिंग कन्वीन की और उसके बाद मस्जिद से हमने मस्जिद जितनी भी हमारी मस्जिद हैं जो हमारा कम्युनिकेशन का साधन था उनको हमने कन्वे किया फिर हमने पुलिस कंट्रोल रूम को कन्वे किया हमारे जितने भी ये मेजर रिवर्स हैं उन पे हमारा कंट्रोल रूम है कंट्रोल सेंटर हैं लेकिन मैं कह रहा हूं कि जब कम्युनिकेशन आप देख रहे हैं कि पिछले छह दिन से कोई कम्युनिकेशन नहीं है कनेक्टिविटी नहीं है और इस किस्म की जब त्रासदी आती है वो एडवांस में वार्निंग देकर तो नहीं आती है हम तो उसके लिए प्रपेयर्ड थे मैंने कहा है कि चार तरीक को मैं कंट्रोल रूम में बैठा था पांच तरीक को मैं कंट्रोल रूम में था सात तरीक को हम जो हमारा पुलिस का कंट्रोल रूम है माय सेल्फ एंड माय चीफ मिनिस्टर हम वहां पे थे तो मुझे लगता है कि अगर आप इसको देखें कि इसकी जो ब्लास्टी है या इसकी जो बेग था वो कितना बड़ा है और पूरी रियासत जो है इसमें जद, ज, इसकी जद में है Headlines today is Atir Khan now joins me uh, on in the studio for more on this story. Uh, Atir, we're given to understand by this exclusive report that is in our possession that the Flood Control Authority had predicted such a situation four years ago. Clearly, the state state administration has been caught napping over that report, and also the general deterioration of the lakes and wetlands that's been reported by the CSE clearly goes to show that this was a disaster waiting to happen, and this. state administration simply failed to take notice well absolutely it has been clearly brought out in our uh, report and also the center for science and environment uh, also says uh, more or less the same thing uh, the reason being that uh, the jammu and kashmir government was sitting over the flood forecast but moreover what it failed to do was it failed to establish a protocol with the central water commission which uh, obviously needs support of the state government to set up a warning a flood warning forecast system which was not there in place also over uh, last one century we have seen that 50% of wat water bodies have shrunk and this has happened due to an uh, unbridled uh, construction encroachment uh, on, on the water bodies Uh, so which leaves no space for the drainage and it affects the micro climate uh, conditions and also uh, right. it exposes uh, the area to floods well absolutely shocking to say the least the state of jammu and kashmir doesn't even have a flood forecast system it doesn't even have 
a separate disaster management unit. We're going to continue to track developments on this story very closely, continue to ask some very tough questions that ought to be asked of the state administ administration that has clearly been caught napping over this impending disaster. Thanks, Arthur, for that update. Well, it has stopped raining in Jammu and Kashmir when water levels have started receding. But several low-lying areas, especially those located near the Jhelum and the Chenab rivers, are still underwater. Rescue operations are being carried out on a war footing. But it is still too early to access the extent of damage to property, infrastructure and to, of course, the loss of life. Here's a full report. So is this the biggest operation that the Indian Air Force has mounted and what are the challenges that your air warriors face, sir? Yeah, so what, what we had to do is to put in some measures straight away and for which uh, what we did is we, we uh, now firstly we had to identify which were the areas which were badly affected uh, out, out of the entire area in JNK. Uh, one could say the area in the valley was by and large uh, quite badly affected and that too if you see what the topography of the valley is, the portions on the western side were not really affected. It's the eastern portion that we are talking about. So it's, it's the southern and the central portion of the valley on the eastern side which was affected the most. So what, what the Air Force did was to set up four task forces and two of them were south of the Banihal and uh, these were operating ex Jammu and uh, Udampur. And there were two which were north of uh, Banihal operating ex uh, Srinagar and uh, Avantipur. Uh, we had to uh, marshal a lot of resources, okay? And uh, as of today, we have close to about 71 aircraft which are operating for the uh, relief operations, which basically comprise of close to about 40 helicopters and 31 uh, uh, fixed wing aircraft. Now, uh, as far as the task is concerned, today is just the sixth day, but I think we've uh, uh, managed a lot. We we have uh, we have achieved almost about 650 sorties. Uh, we have ferried in close to about 600 tons of uh, load. And uh, mm, uh, as far as uh, uh, the aircrafts that have come inside with the load when they are departing, what we are actually doing is we are facilitating the travel of the tourists who have got stranded in the valley. So all in all, I think it's 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 been quite a big effort. So the Indian Air Force operations continue, the magnitude of the crisis still unfolding. With cameraman Vinod Kumar, Gaurav Savant in Srinagar for headlines today. Well, massive rescue and relief work is being carried out in the capital city of Srinagar, especially in areas that are still underwater like Raj Park, Jawahar Nagar, Gogji Park and Shivpura. Two three-storey buildings in some of these areas are still underwater. Headlines today is Mosami Singh managed to get on board an Air Force chopper that was dropping emergency supplies. Here's the report she filed for us from Ground Zero. You can see how the Cheetah chopper has just dropped food materials uh, at the terrace of this house. You can see that white, white bag, the black bag, some food materials and there are children on the other side who are clapping. People are waving and hoping that they will be rescued. And that is how the army is putting all its efforts to get people rescued and if they can't be rescued, try and send relief material, drop food packets. That was the cheetah chopper. We are sitting in a cheetah copter that specially operates at the Siachen Glacier. So now we are taking part in one of the relief operations, trying to provide food material to this family who is waving. They, they wave, there, is, there are two small children, two men and few women there, right near the terrace, just few steps ahead. We, we zoom in close to the terrace, just right on the terrace. Now the door will be open and you can see how close we are to the house. Some, some 
some Maggi packets and two bottles of water uh, at the spot. I hope that that will be enough for them. Yeah, there they, there the child holding the Maggi packets and the girls waving, the women waving and the man in the red shirt waving. There is a smile on their face. They don't know when they will be rescued, but they are happy. You can see that we took part in how the relief material has dropped, how close the Papta goes, we gave an entire exercise, how the army is putting the operations into place, and there are packets still left. We will be continuing the operation till we finish all the relief material, all the food material, and we can head back to the headquarters then. This camera person Ravi Khan is not missing in Srinagar for headlines today. Well, as we've been bringing you ground reports uh, continuously, several parts of uh, the capital of Srinagar were in fact inundated after the Jhelum River breached its embankments in several areas and the Dull Lake swelled up. Headlines today is the first TV channel to have reached Srinagar's picturesque water body. Shuja ul -Haq spoke to a few people who had managed to escape the gushing floods. Here's the report he filed. This is how the tragedy of this flood has struck the people on uh, living on uh, the banks of Dal Lake. Uh, when, when the Dal Lake is flooded, people had to move out of their houses, taking uh, whatsoever, whatsoever refuge that they could uh, with, with, the, with the help of these boats. They came towards the banks of uh, uh, the Dal Lake, towards the upper reaches, and now have set up small little tents here and giving some sort of uh, refuge to them. Uh, let me just try and take you through what is the condition of people who uh, are refugees, who are victims of, uh, uh, of this flood. These basic utensils, this basic uh, cooking stove, some sort of some relief in terms of food material which was given to them by locals is here. They are they are they are living the life of misery here. Bilkul damage sab pani par bahut makan tha, khidki ke upar pani tha, sab zevrat jo chizay banayega, chahe 50 saal hoga, chahe 80 saal hoga, sab doob jayega. Khali मुझे पता नहीं मेरे फैमिली किस जगह है कुछ नहीं नहीं यही खाने वाले जो चीजें थे वो उठाए उसके जल्दी जल्दी में और निकल आए हम it's been more than four days now and uh, the picture of devastation is right in front of us uh, water is into almost all the areas adjoining the Dal Lake. This is one of the areas of uh, uh, the Dal Lake where uh, water came in without any warning. These people were here till 2 in the night and suddenly water started gushing into their houses, giving them no chance whatsoever of, uh, uh, of preparing for any sort of evacuation. Whatever little evacuation that they could do was on their own with their own efforts. Uh, we are trying to come out of this uh, Dal Lake area and as you can see, See, with very great difficulty is, 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 is exactly how these people are trying to come out, bring some, whatever little, uh, little things that they could. Um, you know, the only support that I have and our team has is this gentleman who, is, uh, who has been kind enough to row his boat into these civilian areas and, and we, that is the reason how we have been able to give you these exclusive visuals from the ground. These people, whoever is trained in rowing these boats has first taken out their families uh, to the safer destinations and now they are coming back uh, trying to bring out more and more people from those places where they are stranded. With cameraman Roof, Shujaul Haq, in Shirnagar, Firelines Today.